Hey guys, I hope you can hear me. I am just now getting situated. Wait. And last time I noticed when I went live, there was like a small delay at the very beginning. So I'm kind of trying to make sure that that worked out. And then there's no issues with the, um, loud enough, I don't know. They have some like little <laughs> green dots down here that's telling me my, my voice projection. So I hope you guys can hear me. Anyway, I hope everyone is doing so well. It is raining here. I don't know if it's how the weather is where you are, but every single afternoon it has been raining, which is good. Oh, but it's just like, oh my goodness. So it is raining and such. Am I lagging? Okay. All right. So I'm going to, it doesn't like it's lagging now. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to switch to another internet source. Okay, guys, I don't want to stay on too long. I kind of want to just get out here and chat a little bit more. I enjoyed my first slide. I'm so appreciative to everyone that jumped in and joined in with me. I had a lot of good feedback from my live one after it aired. Um, I had a lot of people come back in and kind of give me some comments and feedback, and I really do appreciate you taking the time to do that. Um, it's just fun. <laughs> so um, good morning, Angela. How are you? How are you? This is, um, I just realized too, it's 10 a.m. Eastern time here, but I guess if you're a specific time, then it's like seven in the morning and wherever else you are in the world. So that's kind of crazy. So I guess some people are probably drinking coffee and then other people might be drinking a soda. <laughs> so last time we discussed um, different types of hooks and things. I do want to make one point of clarification. I was I kept referring to my favorite types of hooks as um, tapered hooks. And they aren't, they're inline hooks. I'm pretty sure I said tapered. But um, again, let me just show you um, this type of hook that I like. And if you can see, it kind of has like a hook underneath it. It's not rounded and it's not straight. So this is the type of hook that I think is a great hook for beginner crocheters. And I wanted to just make sure that I stress that because I don't want you guys going out looking for a hook with a, the wrong name. But if you look for design you can't really go wrong and it's really a preference thing so don't let anyone tell you you have to get a specific type of hook but if you're a beginner I found that it's easier to use these types okay and uh, I mentioned before that this is like one of my favorite hooks just because it, it has almost everything that I'm looking for but this is the one that I don't particularly like and then this is the kind that I do like Okay, so that was just a point of clarification because I went back to watch my replay and I'm like, oh my God, I think I told, I told y'all something wrong. <laughs> so let's jump into the topic that I wanted to discuss today, which is yarn. I get a lot of times when I'm making projects, people will ask me, um, well, I have this really pretty lightweight yarn. Well, can I use that to make the blanket instead of this to make the blanket? And I'm going to be honest, you can make a blanket, you can make things with any kind of yarn that you want. But as a beginner, there are things that you kind of want to stay away from that way you do not get into like, um, you know, you find the yarn that you have like, you go to start your project and it doesn't correlate and it doesn't work up well. So then you're like, you give up. And that's the last thing you really want as a crocheter. You want to, hi, how are you doing, Aisha? Um, you don't want to get discouraged because crocheting is really just a fun thing to do. It's like a nice little hobby. And once you get into your groove of it, it's really like pattern, um, like muscle memory. You just start working and you don't even really think about it. So I don't want you guys to start a project or see a project and then be like, I got the wrong yarn and then you give up, you know? So it's really important. Hi, good morning. It's really important that you, you know, get everything, having the right tools makes the hobby even funner. You know what I mean? Like, can you imagine being like a, a woodworker, but you don't have a saw? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you really want to work with wood, but you don't have the right tools. So crocheting is kind of like that. If you get the right tools, then everything kind of just goes smoother, right? So what I always like to recommend for my beginners is a bulk, a bulky yarn. Hello to you. I love sunflowers. My best friend's uh, Favorite flowers, the flowers. <laughs> Hi, sunshine. Um, so let me say this. The first type of yarn that I started working with was an acrylic yarn from Red Heart. And Red Heart 
acrylic yarns have come so far <laughs> since when I first started working with yarn. But when I did my first video for YouTube, I used a Bernat blanket yarn, which is a very chunky yarn. And let me show you an example. So it looks like this. Now, this is a small skein. Um, this is 100, this is 100, 100 grams. Usually when you look for Bernat blanket yarn, it's in 300 gram skeins. So it's much bigger. But what, I'm, what I wanted to get you to understand is the type of yarn. It's a thicker, more bulkier yarn. You work with a larger crochet hook. So since you're working with a larger crochet hook, it works up better in a way because it's, it's a faster project and you can see your stitch work easier, okay? So I would always suggest, even with this yarn, this is a hit or miss. Some people just can't stand this yarn because it has a Chanel type texture. It's really soft and cozy. But um, for beginners, this is not a bad yarn to start with. Actually, any bulk yarn isn't really a bad place to start just because you're working with a larger crochet hook. Um, oftentimes, when you're doing crocheting, you'll, um, you'll, you'll find a pretty bulky yarn like this, and you'll find, excuse me, you'll find a small crochet hook like this. And they do not, and I can't really see this color. So this is just a white color, guys. But um, they do not correspond. So when you try to wrap a yarn like this on a hook that's this size, it's going to continually slip, right? So that in itself can be problematic when you're trying to learn something, learn a new process. So for instance, if I were to work, I got all my little goodies surrounding me. If I were to work this yarn with, come on out, with this size hook, do you see the difference in in size. So you want to make sure that the yarn you select corresponds with the hook. Okay. And oftentimes on the back of your packaging, which I don't know if you can see this. This is not a this light. Uh, let's see if I find one that has. Oftentimes on the back of your packaging, hmm, I don't see one. I don't know if you can see this. There are, there's like a ball of yarn and it has a weight and then it will give you a suggestion for the yarn hook that you should use. So for this one, it's a four weight yarn and it suggests using a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. So this is gonna help you as a beginner to make sure you're getting the right yarn with the right hook, okay? So that's my first tip. Start with a chunky yarn that you feel comfortable with that matches the hook size. Now, if you don't like a Bernat yarn, you don't like this this slickness of this, the chenille, and I would I will be honest, the very first okay, can't hear me. Sorry about that. <laughs> I would suggest the first um yarn that you use, you use a if you don't like the chenille yarn, there are other bulky yarns. So this is a charisma. And this, it also is a bulky yarn, you see? So you have two different types of yarn, different textures too. They're made up of different fibers. So that's important too. So if you don't like the Bernat, this is a bulky yarn, you may like a Charisma or you may like, I'm gonna do a yarn review on this one on my channel because I have a project that I'm gonna create with this, but, um, this is like a burgundy color. So it plays red. It plays red on the camera, but it's actually more like a garnet, a garnet color. But this is a nice bulky yarn that has a nice shimmer look to it, a little sheen to it. And this is a good beginner friendly yarn, okay? So that's three options that I would start with as a beginner to create something, okay? And not to, you guys have a runaway yarn not to um, go on and on and on, but if you ever have like, um, as a beginner, everybody usually wants to start like with a blanket and blankets are fun, don't get me wrong, but 
things can go wrong with the blanket because you have to learn how to count a little bit as you're working. Because what happens is you may start your blanket with say 40 stitches in your row and then your next row you may end up with 38 because you're a beginner and you're not really used to seeing all of the stitch work, right? So I always suggest for my very first beginners, I start with a scarf, you know, something like that. Um, you get used to the repetition of the project. You get used to your tension, which is something we'll talk about later. You get used to working with the yarn, you know, and it's a smaller scale. So you'll have a scarf that you work around and you'll have a project at the end. You'll get comfortable with doing the stitch work. And um, so that's always my first suggestion for people that start um, want to start crocheting. I, I know everybody gets encouraged because they see a cool blanket and they're like, oh, I want to make a blanket. So this was my one of my first blankets that I created on my channel. Now, this is a fun, easy blanket for you to start with. So I would say you could start here, but making something like infinity art is even easier because, you, like I say, it's smaller and you can learn your you can get more comfortable with the yarn and with the stitch work. You know what I mean? So that's my suggestion in terms of starting projects, but then starting your project with a good bulky yarn also helps. Okay. Now say you just don't want a bulky yarn, right? Cause that, that's the thing about yarn. When you go into the yarn store, it's like you walk in there and you just see tons and tons of just beautiful colors and, beautiful textures and you just kind of get wrapped up in that and you think of all the things you want to create, right? So say your, your eye doesn't take you to a bulky yarn. I would say my next suggestion would be going with like an acrylic yarn, right? So like a Red Heart Super Saver yarn, a Red Heart, I love, um, let's see, Red Heart, they have a softer version that's not a Super Saver, but it's a four weight yarn as well. Those are good yarns to start with. Hi, Billy, how are you? <laughs> um, those are good ones to start with as well because they um, have a good stretch to them. Acrylic yarns are, um, they have a, a, like a give to them when you're working them. So it's a good yarn for beginners. You do, however, use a smaller crochet hook, right? And so um, oftentimes if you get started in a crochet, um, you want to start crocheting, you will see the most widely available hooks are the smaller hooks, right? So 5.5, a six millimeter hook, something like that. Those go well with a acrylic four weight yarn. Okay. So an example of that, do I even have that? Would be... Oops. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Red Heart with Love. That's the one. Red Heart. That's a good one. It's a soft version. Now, this is not the Red Heart with Love. This is just the Red Heart Super Saver yarn. I like using this yarn when I'm making projects. Like if I were going to make some earrings or if I were going to make a, a patch. I've made full projects with this. Like I've, I've made a full cardigan using Red Heart. Um, super saver yarn just to see how it turned out and it did have okay drape because the larger the project it's still draped okay but this yarn has a more of a scratchier I don't know if it's, that's fair to say but it's not as soft but the red heart with love is a good beginner friendly yarn that has a nice softer texture but if I'm starting crocheting I see nothing wrong with learning how to make a scarf with this yarn okay it just Something about it, you can see your stitch work really well. Maybe because it's a little bit stiffer, it's inexpensive. That's another good point for this. Um, but yeah, there's another. Oh, here's one, guys. I do have it. This is a Red Heart with Love. Um, and another great thing about the Red Heart yarn um, is it has so many different colorways, right? So you could do oranges and yellows and pinks and all the different colors. So your eye will be drawn to this section because it really normally takes up a big bulk of your yarn stores. If you're in like a, a Michaels or a Joann's Fabric or somewhere like that, you'll see a lot of the Red Heart. Now, Hobby Lobby has its own brand of four weight yarn and it's called, and I've worked with that one too and I actually really like it. Um, 
I love this yarn. I love this yarn. Um, yeah, exactly. Working with smaller projects first is the best way to get a lot of practice. I completely, completely agree. Um, dishcloths. But let me say something. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a pin in the dishcloths real quick. But um, I love this yarn by Hobby Lobby. It's a four weight yarn that's really nice and softer. Soft. It reminds me of the Red Heart with Love in a sense. But um, so as far as like smaller projects, dishcloths are good, right? But cotton yarn from a beginner standpoint is not as easy to work with as acrylic yarn. That's what my, been my experience. It's not that it's not a good yarn. It's just, there's not a lot of give to it, right? So smaller projects like, um, like I said, like the scarves, um, infinity scarves, um, what else can you make? Um, I mean, guys, name some other like small projects that maybe some other beginners can learn to love and um, use. Coasters. I mean, I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on all of the fun projects, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's my suggestion. Um, I found this cotton yarn from Hobby Lobby. Now, and this one feels a lot different than the um, sugar and cream cotton yarn. So granny square, yeah, the granny square. That's actually the, I'm, my very first project I created with Red Heart for granny squares. That's a really good one. Um, this, I love this cotton yarn by, um, I love this cotton. This is a Hobby Lobby yarn it feels different than the regular cotton that you would like the sugar and cream cotton. So this one, you might be able to get away with making a dishcloth easily. I, I don't know something about it. It just feels softer. It doesn't have that, that tension that some of the other cotton yarns have, but um, that's a really good project to learn off if you want to try that. So four bulky yarns, four weight yarns um, are good. Let me caution you though on some bulky yarns. Some bulky yarns are like this, guys. Oh, I love this. I bought, this went on sale and I bought like five or six skeins of it with great intentions. That's And that's another thing too, when you start crocheting, you'll realize that like, <laughs> you'll see all the yarn and you buy all the yarn and then you, you'll forget what you bought it for. So I bought this yarn with great intention. But it doesn't have, and you probably cannot see this, but I'm going to do a review on this yarn as well. But it doesn't have a good twist to it. So when you go to crochet, oftentimes it's hard to see your stitch work. So you want to be careful even when you're looking for bulk yarn. This is a bulk yarn. This is a bulk yarn of five. Um, so not all bulk yarn is the same. So you want to be careful of that too as a beginner. When you start looking at yarn, you're looking for something that kind of has a good twist to it so that you can really see your stitch work as you're working. You know what I mean? That's important as a beginner. Okay. And I'm talking everything from a beginner perspective because as you start crocheting more, you know, the sky's the limit. You can work with anything. Um, well, you know whatever you feel comfortable with, you know what I'm saying? Um, so be careful with your bulky yarns too. You know, they're not all, they're not all created the same. That's one thing I will say. Um, another thing I would kind of stay away from, hot pads. Yeah, someone put down hot pads. That's a neat, that's a good one, especially for now, you know, right? It's, it's going to get cool soon and everyone's going to be drinking, you know, coffee and tea or you're cooking, you know, for the holidays. That's a really good idea um, another thing I would caution you with as a new beginner is, you know, the, the self-striping yarn, not even self-striping, it's like a multicolor yarn. Those also can be a little tricky in the very beginning as well, because you don't see your stitches as easily. Um, so I worked, um, a project using, this is another, see how it's all multicolored. So while this is a fun yarn to work with, and the project kind of looks like this. As, as a beginner, when you start working and you see stitches like this here in this area, so while this might be easy, sometimes it gets harder to see your work because A, you're using 
a multicolored yarn and B, you're using a yarn that um, you're using a smaller crochet hook, right? Because of the weight of the yarn. So you want to be careful of that too, right? Um, just because you're in, you're in the beginning stages of crocheting and while this is really fun and pretty, and I love green guys. I love almost anything camel, camel color. Um, it could be a little challenging if you're new to crocheting. So you want to keep that in mind as well. And then also dark colors. So um, the dark, the blacks, the dark blues. Sometimes it's hard to see your stitches in that as well. So keep that in mind. Okay. Now, so we've talked about the bulky yarn and the acrylic yarn. And I gave you uh, Big Twist is another one that you can get from Joanne's Fabric. That's a good acrylic yarn. Vanish Choice, which I think though, it may be going out of business because I haven't seen um, Vanish Choice in a while. I'm almost done with my hexagon. Ooh, a hexagon cardigan. That's nice. Man, I wish I could see what that looked like when you were finished with it. That's that's gonna be so pretty. Morning, how are you? Oh my goodness. Um, I haven't seen Vanish Choice yarn in a while, and I don't know if you know. That's one thing too. Oh, that's another thing too, guys. If you if you're shopping for yarn and say you know you have a project that you want to complete, go ahead and get all of the skeins. In that moment, I, I say skeins, it could be skeins, I say skeins, guys. But get all of the rolls of yarn that you're going to need at that time. There's a couple of reasons why. The first glaring one is, undoubtedly, when you go back, it won't be there. That's the first thing, right? Secondly, there's a dye lot, meaning they're all dyed at a different time. And almost all yarns will tell you their dye lot on the packaging. And sometimes you can see, you can this this yarn color could be you know, olive, but you go back and it just looks a little bit off. I've completed a complete cardigan and had to order some line off, off, um, had to order some yarn offline while it was the same color, same brand, same everything, because it had a different dye lot. It was a different color. So it just, it was what it was. And I should have just bought. So that's why a lot of crocheters and yarn enthusiasts and knitters, they tend to have so much yarn because you overbuy because you really want to make sure you have enough to complete your project. You know, that's important. So um, now let's talk about some of the premium yarns, right? In my area, we don't have like a lot of yarn stores, right? Outside of, you know, Walmart, Joanne's Fabric, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, which I'll just call like big box yarn stores. So we don't really have a place where you can buy nice premium yarn when you're dealing with different types of fiber, apaca, um, wool, different blends, right? We don't have a lot of those. So you, sometimes you have to get those online. So I'm a part of, um, I use a lot of knit crate yarn. I get knit crate yarn every month. Um, and I will say, while I love sub yarn subscription boxes, and I love that because you really get to, yeah, thank you guys so much. Be sure to, yeah, thumbs it up, thumbs it up. Get people to come in here and chat with us. Um, while you can get a lot of good yarn from companies, you know, through subscription boxes, be aware as a beginner crocheter or beginner knitter, those yarns are oftentimes a premium type of yarn. So they're like a lighter weight. Um, and maybe I should back into weights of yarns and what all that means, but um, they are um, a lot lighter weight. So you have to be comfortable working with that smaller crochet hook. So if you get into these premium subscription box programs like Knit Crate, you um, are darn good yarn or all the other ones that are out there keep in mind that you're getting, you're probably getting a premium yarn. And because of that, it you have to be comfortable working with that. So what I mean by that, let me just show you. Um, this project here was created with um, a knit crate yarn. You can see, you can see that it has a different kind of drape. It's really, it almost feels like the fabric, when you buy something from the store, it feels like that, like you could have purchased this from the store, as opposed to this, 
was made with, what did I make this with guys? Mm. Hello, how are you? I can't pronounce your name. Sorry. You're a beginner. We're, we're all kind of beginners in a way, aren't we? Um, it doesn't have the same drape as something like this, okay? Premium yarn, box store yarn. Great though to learn, great, it keeps you warm. I love this. The more you wear this and the more you wash it, the better it will feel. Um, but right out the gate, this feels great, okay? So, and let me show you. So this is a, a yarn from, oh, I hate that, let me see. Can you, I'm trying to show the color. <laughs> Um, maybe let's go with this one. This is green. So this is a knit crate yarn. And as you can see, it's a thinner yarn, much thinner. And I believe this is a sport weight yarn, which means it's a lighter weight yarn. Yeah. And they, this is a suggested hook size of like a three, three to five. So if you're new to crocheting, you're thinking, you're looking at a hook that looks like this. Do you see how small? Uh, let me see if I have a five and a different. <laughs> okay, like this. See how small that hook is? So if you're new to crocheting, this could be a little intimidating, right? Working with this small hook with this thin yarn. So a lot of times your premium yarn boxes will have that. They'll have those, those really nice yarns. But keep in mind, sometimes the nice yarns are smaller weight, but they have great drape. They have really good. When I say drape, it's the way it hangs off your body. Um, I definitely wouldn't create... Uh, coasters or anything with a yarn like this. You know what I mean? This is definitely something you would want to wear. Socks. Um, they have sock weight yarn. Stuff like that. So. Does anybody have any questions about anything? Or any suggestions that I can make to the people? I will say that, you know, I'm testing out this time frame. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> she said, why everything I do don't come out right? Honestly, it's just it's just getting used to it. If you're a beginner, it's just getting used to it. And then you have to keep in mind that it's handmade, right? So it's supposed to have imperfections. That's the whole point. Like it's, it's not made off of a machine. So you have to learn to kind of sometimes embrace those and understand that not no two garment may be the same. You know what I mean? It's, that's the cool thing about crocheting though, honestly. Yeah, that's like the, the best thing about it. <laughs> but it will start coming out right eventually. You, you, so many of my projects, I've created something different out of them. You know, I was telling them the last last stream um, that I started making. Let me show you. Just in case you're new, I started I started making this, and this was supposed to be a cardigan, and it's not going to be a cardigan in this life. It's almost a blanket. I messed up the whole sizing, so it doesn't come out right. But guess what? I'm changing it to something else. <laughs> I'm changing this something else. That's so not a big deal. Oh, one more thing, guys. I know I'm, I'm rambling today. Let me um, let me mention this. If you choose to go with like a yarn subscription box, you know what I mean, like like a knit crate. You have to hold my mattress on here. So if you go with like a knit crate promotion, and you get really pretty yarns. Look how pretty this yarn is, guys. Super pretty. I didn't even open this one yet. Our maker life. And usually when you go with certain programs, they always have like a little pattern book in there, something like this, right? And it tells you how to use it. I never use the patterns, guys, because I don't, I don't crochet like that. Um, with patterns, you know, that sometimes the patterns are a little complicated. Um, but you can always pair your lightweight yarns with, I lost my yarn. Don't come to me. <laughs> uh, 
lightweight yarns with a different type of yarn. And that way you can kind of, or you can take the two, in my case, I got two out of this box, right? I can come up with something smaller, put these two together, crochet them at the same time, you know what I mean? And then you get unif you can get the benefit of a lighter weight yarn, premium yarn, but that's something that you could work with. You know what I mean? So I say give these type of subscription box, not just Knit Crate, but any of them. Give them a try if you want to get some nice, good quality yarn in your in your stash. And then to work them, because this is super thin, guys, super. This is like a sock yarn, probably. See how thin it almost looks like thread. But if I put these two together, it's still a little thin in this case, but you probably could work it better. No, okay, as a beginner, would I subscribe to Knit Crate? No, I wouldn't, not initially. No, I, I shouldn't say it like that because Knit Crate is a great yarn subscription box program overall, but the yarn that you're gonna get, I'm telling, it's just harder to work with at, in the very beginning. So maybe once you get like two or three or four projects underneath your belt and you're ready to start something new, something that you wanna wear, a garment, then yeah, and just try it for a couple of months get a few, few nice yarns and see if you like it, you know? <laughs> Tips on broke beginners. You've just spoke to me. Um, and I don't know what that means. Um, I'm learning how to use this guide. I'm getting like proficient and everything. But um, so if you're a beginner, if you're a beginner and you still want to learn how to crochet without going broke, because that's what most of us do, we get in that yarn store, go into the store with a purpose. Do not let them coax you with the soothing music and the beautiful colors. <laughs> I'm telling this to you, but I'm really telling it to me. But yeah, go in there with a purpose, have the project in mind that you want get in and get out. <laughs> That's what I would say. I would say get in and get out. Um, get you a good, some few good hooks too. So like a six millimeter hook, I would say yeah, a 10 millimeter hook and maybe like a five, you know, something like that because that will get you a good blanket. The 10 millimeter will get you a good blanket. Um, six will give you a good scarf. Yeah, yeah. Can you use four ply? You can. And she asked, Angela asked Sunshine if she could use a four ply or bulky for beanies, and you can. This is a um, kind of like a hat that I made. It's like a turban, and I used a four ply mixed with a knit crate yarn. I did. Um, tips for working with thinner yarn. I'm sorry, I just scoot it back up. Thinner yarn, That my tip, like I said before, really is just, A, you have to get used to your stitch. Like you have to get used to working with your stitch. You have to make sure you have the right crochet hook for the yarn. Because like, for instance, if it tells you you should be using a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook and you pick a five, all of your stitch work is going to be really gappy. It's going to be wider. You know what I mean? So um, you would just have to get, if you're good at working with smaller hook sizes, I would say go right in, go for it. I know I had a neighbor when I was growing up, she used to make doilies, lace doilies, make using lace yarn. Uh -uh, not for me. Not for me. <laughs> it is a lot, it's a lot of, a lot of work, you know? So, um, my tip would be to just get you, get used to your, tension you want to make sure that you have good tension and if if all those fails double up your your thinner yarns so you have two working at the same time and and then get used to it from that perspective you know i keep seeing this random comment and i don't know if you guys can see it or not 
I don't know how to block people. Not that I really want to block people, but if this is, a, you know, the platform for you, then why would you be you know, in here? You know what I mean? Okay, so I was trying to make sure I didn't have any, anybody else with questions. Um, do you have an Etsy shop? I do have an Etsy shop. Um, it's just my name. Um, it's my YouTube name, Oslo, Oslo Ann. Pretty much everything that I, I wor I'm working on is under Oslo Ann. The cocoon, that cocoon um, uh, cardigan was fun to make. That was fun to make. Yeah. But yeah, everything that I have. Um, also, guys, you know, I tr I'm trying to do these lives. And this is getting a little long, so I'm going to wrap it up. But I'm trying to do these lives at this time, right? But I'm also going to test to see if Sunday is a better day, too. Because it's the middle of the morning. People have things to do. And I enjoy chatting about yarn. I could probably do this all day long. But um, I wanted to just make sure that I get a good time. So this is a floating a floating test run, I guess, for a, while, a month or so at this time period. And then I'll try to incorporate another time period just to make sure I'm, my whole point here is just to make sure that I'm available to my subscribers and people that are interested in learning about crocheting. So I want to make sure that I'm here during the time that most people can get online and chat with me. So we're kind of testing this out. It's kind of a moving target right now, as my husband likes to say. And we'll, we'll kind of come up with a time that kind of works for the majority of my subscribers without like impeding on any of the other people in this space. Because honestly, the crochet knit creative corner of YouTube is a really amazing space to be. Everyone seems so kind and really just encouraging. And I really, really like that, especially, you know, how everything is going in the world. You, This hobby is so relaxing. And oftentimes I found a lot of people in this space and you're trying to learn they're so helpful. So I don't want to impede on anybody else's helpful moments. So I'm going to look for a time that works for my people and people that like my teaching style. So we're, we're trying 10 Eastern time on Tuesdays um, for like our sipping and stitching. And I haven't sipped a thing today, <laughs> but um, that's what we're going to try. And then I may look at a Sunday date because I think I can get more help if this actually grows into something more I would need someone to kind of help me moderate and stuff like that because it's hard to kind of read some of the comments and you know communicate so we'll wrap it up with that I think I may just sit do all of these tips either as a blog post or another video I don't know you guys if it was helpful we'll see we'll see if you have any questions so after this goes off um, I think it takes a couple of hours for the live to show up, but just leave them there. I go back and I review the questions. Um, everybody, like the last time, like I said, they were really, there was really a lot of questions, but a lot of people were really appreciative to the blog. So I mean, to this, to this open dialogue like this. So for my beginners, again, just, I, I suggest bulky, you know, um, if you can't find a bulky and you have acrylic, a four weight acrylic, I suggest that's fine too. And then if you want to kind of migrate into a premium yarn, I would suggest doing a, a subscription box service just for a few months to get you some in your stash to see if you like it. Um, and then, you know, that's probably the best way to get started with premium yarns. And um, yeah, you guys working on anything, any projects? Is there anything that you guys want me to make? I'm gonna do some, I think gloves. I have, I think an apron coming. Um, I'm working on a few things, but if you guys have something you want me to create, just let me know and I'll try to work that pattern. Okay. Or at least give you the, the pointers that work for me. If you haven't checked out my latest video, I do review the Bernat roving yarn and there is a giveaway at the end of that video. So if you look at it and you watch it and you want to try to enter the giveaway, it's going to end, though, next Monday. Okay? So, yeah. If there's any other questions, I'll wait for a second to see. I'm doing a cable afghan throw. Oh, my gosh. I want to see that. I bet that's going to be so pretty. She says, I'm doing a cable afghan throw. That's going to be so pretty. It's going to be pretty. I'm still working on my little baby blanket. Um... And then I need to flip gears 
to create a project for Christmas. Some projects, some Christmas projects. And I still kind of want to do like a scarf stitch along type thing. Nothing complicated, just getting people used to making it. <laughs> Have I sipped my tea? I haven't. I made tea this morning with every intention on drinking it, but I've been running my mouth. I've been running my mouth. <laughs> so I haven't drank my tea. Maybe I should just do it for a massage. So does anybody have any questions about anything? And if you're catching this later in the day, I'm asking the question now, but that this is for you too. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Um, I, um, I'll go back and answer them. I'll answer you directly, but then, um, if I get enough of the same questions, I'll make sure I address it in my next live. So my next live, guys, let's wrap this up. My next live is going to be the unnecessary necessaries. I think that's what we're going to call it. So the gadgets of the crochet world. What do you really need? What is really helpful? What's not really helpful? Um, things like that. So I've been gathering up some of my gadgets because over the years I have purchased so many things just because they're cute. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like, look at this shirt. Guys, look at this shirt. I don't even know if you can see it. It says, I love yarn. I went into Hobby Lobby literally just to just look, just to look. And this shirt caught me and it's look. And I never look at the shirts in Hobby because they don't go to Hobby Lobby to buy shirts, right? And this shirt, I, I felt it calling me. It said, Felicia. And when it caught me, it was only $3.49. $3.49. I love yarn. And it's in gold lighter. Where would you recommend ordering yarn from beginner and how much at a time? Um, good question. So her question, if you didn't hear me, where would you recommend ordering yarn as a beginner and how much at a time? So in the world, you know what I'm saying? Amazon, you can buy Amazon yarn, but to me, it's more expensive. So I would suggest if you, um, you know, go directly to like Joanne's Fabrics website, go directly to Hobby Lobby website. Most people, especially now, they're doing shipping. And um, that's how I would do it if I ordered it online. Amazon's great as like a backup. You know what I mean? And especially if you don't have access to some of the other big yarn stores like Michael's and stuff. Um, but there's a price. Usually there's a price jump with Amazon, you know? And how much you order, it's going to be based off your project, you know? I would definitely suggest um, deciding what you're going to create. If you're following someone else's pattern, most of the times they'll tell you how much yarn they used and then kind of go from there. You know what I mean? So that you're not ordering um, not enough. That's the big thing. You don't want to not have enough yarn. So, yeah. My favorite yarn I made for that blanket. I made yarn. Oh, velour. I just bought some velour yarn. Oh my gosh. I was going to make Christmas stockings. You're welcome, Eva. I was going to make some Christmas stockings with it, but I don't know. It's so pretty. So pretty. But yeah, so I went into Hobby Lobby and I lost my mind just a little bit. I didn't buy that much stuff, but I got gadgets. And so, um, to add to the gadgets that I already have that I probably don't need. So next video, we're going to talk about the unnecessary necessaries of crochet. And um, if you have any questions about any of the, anything I've said it before, leave it in my comment section down below. As far as like where you can reach me, Ocelan, A-H-S-E-L, that is pretty much everywhere. Um, Instagram is Ocelan underscore crochets. So I have two pages, but the crochet one is where I like to try to you know, funnel all of my crochet stuff. So you can find me there. I have a website, which is also oscillant.com where I try to put all of my written patterns there. Um, Etsy, if you want to purchase a written pattern, that's there as well, which is also oscillant. So I try to keep the branding the same so that I'm easy to find. If you forgot how to spell my name, you'll be able to find me everywhere with the same name. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I answered the questions about the beginner yarn, bulk acrylic, and then you can go into your premium yarns, making sure that your corresponding hook 
matches the yarn. That's the key. Okay, guys. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope to see you in the comment section or on my next live. Okay, bye. <laughs>